third opportunity this season. Eddie Hill has had to win his first ever NHRA national event. He's come up short twice, would certainly like to finally get into the win column. The tiny front wheels on Eddie Hill's car in the far lane. Dick LaHaye in the near lane. There's 200 valuable world championship points for Dick LaHaye if he can win here. And look at this as they thunder down the tour of a mile. A good start by both drivers. It is Dick LaHaye by what appears to be less than a car lane. 526 to a 533. 274 for LaHaye, 276 for Eddie Hill. And Joe Amato right now is walking back to his trailer with not a hint of a smile. Let's take a look one more time. The growth of the header flange tell you that Dick LaHaye reacted first. By two one hundredths of a second, he had the advantage over Eddie Hill. But at this point, in his peripheral vision, you know Dick LaHaye could see that white car from Texas. But now, he no longer sees it as he crosses the finish line a car length ahead. Dick LaHaye said it as he begins to pull the helmet off now. One whale of a weekend, Dick, a 526 with a 275 as he takes home the title here at the Fall Nationals. And I know your heart has been thumping the entire weekend long. Well, I'll tell you what, Paul. This whole weekend has just been out of control. You know, we come in here and we were kind of struggling qualifying. We ended up qualifying number three, which I shouldn't complain about that. And, and then Joe was running so well, and he's got the quickest and fastest car, you know, and it just things just fall into place and the Lord was watching over us I guess and we started running those ETs and it run four quick runs and good enough to win the race and moving a little closer toward a championship crown too well now we're less than a round behind him if he should go out around before we do it the next race we could win this world championship you know and it just one thing I've got to do and I've got to do this Castrol GTX puts this race on every year I have won every one of their races in the last two years four of them in a row and John Gardella is going to be under, out of control. <laughs> <laughs> great for you, great for them. What a great day. Thank you. All right, thanks, Dick LaHaye. Amato, on the other hand, has not been doing too badly himself. Consistently in the low 530s, he has top speed of this race at over 276 miles an hour. This is the third consecutive final round appearance for Joe Amato. He lost to Daryl Gwynn at the World Finals. He lost the recently completed Winter Nationals. Now, once again, facing Gwynn in the finals of the Gator National. Both cars are staged. A great start. A tremendous race. At the finish line, it's Joe Amato in the upset of Tom Fuel. Amato wins with his first ever 5.20 elapsed time at 5.29 seconds. Joe Amato defeats Daryl Gwynn. The starting line advantage is obviously Amato's. He does not relinquish it at any point on the racetrack. And as they approach that finish line, 1,320 feet away from the start, by more than a car length, Joe Amato, your champion. That picture tells it all for Daryl Gwynn. For the second time in his career, when he set the new record, he lost the race. Right. Not only did this man slap a hole shot on Daryl Gwynn, he will never forget, but you ran a career best of 529. Steve, once you're in the final, it's anybody's race. The TRW Keystone Automotive Dragster is really, it's hot. You know, we're, we're going to win that six finals in a row and two runners up. Things always happen to me in threes, and that's two. We got one more to go. And you know, I've said this before, but it's tough to make an engine change and run as well. I don't care what anybody says. My crew, Tim Richards, he builds engines like super stock engines. He can, I, all the I was so confident putting the engine in, I just felt good about today. My group guys felt good, and we didn't want to go out and try and run a 525 and beat us. I told him, if you give me five low 30s, today I'd win. And he gave me a 29 for a bonus. <laughs> and your driving was brilliant. Yeah, it, was, it just felt good. You know, you ever come to a racetrack and you feel hot? Well, today I felt that way. It felt good because it was good. Joe Amato, Motocraft Gator National Top go, Fuel go. Champion. Not 
quite enough to break the speed record of Joe Amato, but Dick LaHaye wins his fourth title of the year, sets a new elapsed time record in the process, and becomes the second driver in history to record a speed over 280 miles an hour in a standing start quarter mile. There's the margin of difference. One car length for Dick LaHaye. Kim LaHaye told me off camera just before the final round, Steve, we're going for it all, and you almost got it. You've won it for the second year in a row. You got the ET record at a 514. Oh, I'll tell you what, Steve. I can't thank the Lord enough. I mean, there's been so many prayers going on over there in that camp today that it's unreal, because we've been kind of lost coming in these races, because we kept smoking the tires and so forth, and we finally got it figured out, I guess. And I'm just thrilled to know, and I'll bet Kim is just ecstatic right now. He's wearing the horn out on that old truck. <laughs> you became only the second driver to ever top 280, but you missed the record by just a little bit. Well, hey, you know, I mean, well, how, 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 or what else could we do to top the day off? I mean, <laughs> Joe's the fastest car out there, and I've got a lot of respect for him and Tim Richards. And, I mean, this has just been one heck of a season. It's going to continue to be that way, too. You needed that record to offset the one he set. That's right. Now we're even, but I went two rounds more than he did in one race, so I picked some points up on him. And oh, it tightens it up, doesn't it? Oh, boy, I'll tell you what. Going into Texas, this is going to be fun. Dick LaHaye, for the second year in a row, he has won the Castro GTX Keystone Nationals. What a job he's done. What a job this whole crew has done. <laughs> So it's Dick LaHaye in the near lane, Joe Amato in the far lane. Both begin to inch up now into the staging lights, the final round, top fuel eliminator, the 33rd, U.S. Nationals. Both of them move forward ever so slowly. The light goes green. They come off the line fairly even. LaHaye wavers the front end just a bit, but Amato takes it all the way for the win. Joe Amato with a 526-279 to a losing 525-274. And Joe Amato wins his first U.S. Nationals. Don, let's look at it again. Paul, we've been talking about reaction time this entire race. You're going to see right there, Joe wins the race by leaving first. LaHaye actually had a better ET and should have won, but Joe, by virtue of that leave, has won the race. Joe Amato had the best leave of any driver in top fuel. The driver won this one. He ran a hundredth quicker and you beat him. Oh, well, Steve told me it was going to... Yeah, Steve. Steve, you're okay, Steve. That's okay. I'm not excited or nothing. God, the U.S. Nationals. <laughs> Tim told me it was going to be real tight, he said, but you're going to have to weld them to the tree. You know, we've been driving real good all day, and I've been just concentrating a real lot on the tree. And I've been getting real good lights, and, you know, I've gotten my eyes picked out the last race, so I came here with the idea that I knew I was going to have to do real good, and, and thank God they gave me enough power to do it. You know, nothing I could tell you would spoil this moment, but you missed the record by a tenth of a mile an hour. God, Steve, I wish we polished the car before. <laughs> a tenth. Well, that's okay. We'll, we'll get it at the Motorplex. I'm not, you know, wanted to win the Nationals. We wanted to get the points lead. You know, we want to do good for our sponsors, TRW, Mr. Gasket, Hurst. You know, there's a lot of people here. The U.S. Nationals, you know, the winter time, everybody remembers who won the U.S. Nationals. Right. You know, the World Championship, this helps us on the points, too. So, uh, you know, Tim Richards and my wife and the crew, they did an outstanding job. No one who saw it will ever forget 282 miles an hour. Thank you for that. And we'll be back with the 282. Man, we didn't back the record up, but it'll happen before the year's out. Joe Amato, what a happy man. Amato trying to back the record up, that is run within 1% of that 282, so it would go into the books as an official record. But Joe Amato, nonetheless, is the U.S. Nationals top fuel champion. There, the congratulations from Dick LaHaye. Well, they both ran 5.33 elapsed time for the quarter mile of the previous round. Only by two one thousandths did Amato earn lane choice. So this is a toss-up. I'll tell you, I wouldn't bet up. Assume either way on the outcome of this top fuel final. Amato's ready. LaHaye is ready. The three comes down. They leave right together. No advantage off the mark. LaHaye in the near lane. The far lane Amato. The win line and the expression there on the crew tells you where it was. Dick LaHaye has won this race by a hundredth of a second. 531 to a 532. Fabulous drag race in this top fuel final. Both cars lean together. No clear advantage there. They look as if almost a mirror image of each other as we watch them at half track. There they are, nose to nose, into the lights, impossible to call a winner, almost visually. As we watch Dick LaHaye's crew, the truck being driven by daughter, Kim, coming down the race.
racetrack. Boy, are they happy. Dick LaHaye came out of this car saying the same thing that we're all saying. What a race. Well, I hope to tell you, we was right together all the way down the track. And, you know, I knew Joe and I was going to have a good race in the final here because we both were in 33s and... You know, we're both very consistent. And that was a 31 to a 32. Well, that's a little bit better yet than it was. And I guess we did the right move on it. And all as I can say, with all this heat and everything, with the track, that it's definitely Miller time. <laughs> and four races this season, four different winners. What what a top two year it's going to be. It already is. Oh, yeah, I know. It, you know, it's got to a point where that it's uh, got... The cars are so bunched together with Daryl and Joe and Garlitz and myself. And now I've moved ahead of Garlitz into number three spot. And... You know, it's just, it's going to be a heck of a season. This is, we're not even halfway through it yet.